What's up guys, welcome to Rotor Riot and welcome back to Learn to FPV. On the last episode I did an overview on all the different parts that go in your drone and on this episode I'm going to do a quick overview of the parts that stay down on the ground with you. So that's your radio, your goggles, and your charger. The main difference from these parts to the parts on the drone is drones can kind of come and go. You're definitely going to crash it, you're going to break them, it could have a flyaway, it could be stuck in a tree, and you could end up with a whole multitude of different drones. But with these parts, this is something that you're going to use all the time. No matter which drone you're flying, you're always going to be holding that radio and wearing these goggles. And every time you need to charge your batteries, you're going to be using this charger. So when you're picking different parts to build your drone, there's corners you can cut, you can go with different cheaper components. But with all of these things, I really recommend get the best one that you can afford and don't buy it multiple times over. Save yourself the money. With that said, let's talk about radios a little bit. In the simulator episode, I mentioned that the QX7 is, in my opinion, overall the best bang for the buck radio. And I still do believe that. But different people prefer different things and there's different price levels. So while that's only a hundred bucks and it does everything you need, maybe a hundred is out of your budget. So there are cheaper radios that will also get the job done. There's also more expensive radios. So maybe a hundred dollars is nothing to you and you don't mind spending 500. Maybe you don't mind spending a thousand. Maybe you don't mind spending $3,000 on a radio. Everybody's different. People have different budgets. So the main different brands you'll come across in radios are FlySky, FRSky, Spectrum, and Futaba. So if you're looking for a really cheap radio, those are going to be your FlySky radios. They work perfectly well, they'll fly the drone, they'll get, they'll do everything that you need them to do. Just the overall quality of them is a little bit cheaper. I don't think there's as many good options for receivers as you're gonna see in FR Sky. Some of them are kind of big and clunky, but they do have some good receivers for them. So if you're on a tight budget, a Fly Sky radio is definitely not a bad way to go. In the Fly Sky brand, but a little more expensive, a little bit nicer, you've got this radio, this is the Nirvana. So this is kind of like a more radical design. The ergonomics of that are really nice. It's really different. But some people may think that's ugly. Some people may not like the way it feels. It's it's really just depends on you. And if you have the opportunity, the best thing that you can do for both radios and goggles is see if there's any local events near you. See if there's a multi-GP racing chapter and go and meet some people and be nice, talk to them, and ask them if you can hold on to their radio. Get a feel for what it feels like in your hands. If you can, see if you can look through their goggles and see which ones you like. So I don't have one here with me right now, but another really good brand of radios is Spectrum. Spectrum has a really nice feel. They're built well. It's been around for a really long time. And another upside to using Spectrum is if you like to fly airplanes, there's a lot of bind and fly models that will be ready to go for Spectrum. I'd say that Spectrum and FR Sky are kind of the Ford and Chevy in the radio world. So some people swear Spectrum's better, some people swear FR Sky's better. They're both good radios. In traveling around and meeting different people, I've found that there's sort of like pockets. Some towns I've gone to, every guy there is using a Spectrum radio. Other places, pretty much everybody's got the QX7. It really just depends, and it's probably not a bad idea if you are flying with a group of other guys use similar gear to what they have. That way, if you have problems, they have experience and they can help you out. So Spectrum has a wide range of radios. Some are gonna be cheaper, less functionality, but a lot more affordable. Some have a lot more features and they're more expensive. And while we're talking about high-end radios, you also have Futaba. So Futaba has been around a really long time. They make really high quality products, but they're a lot more expensive. Whereas this radio is $100, I think I paid about $500 for this one. And they have radios that go up to like three grand. It just depends on the person though. Different people have a different budget. So for some people spending a thousand or two or three thousand dollars on a radio, it's not a big deal. They have the money to spend. Other people, they're not even trying to spend a hundred. They're, they're going for that $50 radio. But at the end of the day, any radio is basically going to work. As long as there's nothing faulty with that radio and it's broken, the sticks will move the drone. It's, it's not a big deal which one you get. But I do recommend get the best one that you can afford because again, this is something you're going to hold every time you fly, no matter which drone you're flying. Okay, let's talk about goggles. 
There's two main different types of goggles that you'll find. So you have your box style goggle and your goggle style goggle, I guess. I don't know if we really have a name for this. So usually the box goggles are gonna be a lot cheaper and these goggles are gonna be a better form factor, they're lighter, they're more comfortable to wear, and you look less like a dork. You still look like a dork, but you look less like a dork with these. So besides form factor, the other main difference between the two is a box goggle is just gonna have one screen inside of it. Whereas these style goggles have an individual screen for each eye. That's kind of where your price difference comes in because it's really easy to source a small LCD monitor and stick it in a box. That's a really common device that you find everywhere. But I don't even know of another purpose to have these two individual screens like that. So it's a much less common screen and getting all that fit into a tight space, it just drives the cost up. But there are upsides aside from the price to going with a box style goggle. With these, not everybody's eyes will work with them. Depending on the, the spacing and the, the actual their actual eyesight, they might never be able to get their image to look right in those goggles. So having that single screen on the box style goggles is going to be a little more forgiving for different people's eyes. And Fat Shark actually has some of these newer ones. They're, they're really not too bad. They're not that big compared to something like this. They're a little bit smaller and the image is actually pretty good on these. One major advantage to going with these style goggles are they have more different options for what kind of receiver module is in it. Typically on a box style goggle, you're not going to be able to change it. It's just built right in. So I can pull this antenna off, but I cannot change that. That's just built right into the screen. And not only that, but both of these goggles here, they only have one antenna, whereas these can accept two. This is something we call diversity. What diversity is, is essentially that receiver module has two receivers in it. So there's different ways that can be used. One way is you can have different types of antennas on it. So some antennas are called omnidirectional. So you can think of it as working like in a globe. So no matter which direction you go, you're gonna have equal range in that direction. Other antennas are directional. So if I were to go this way, I'm not gonna get a whole lot of range, but if I go this way within the beam of that antenna, I can go a lot further than what an omnidirectional antenna will give me. There are some box goggles that have diversity receivers, but typically the performance you get out of the ones that you can stick into this type of goggle are gonna be a little better. So how that diversity module works in that situation is depending on which antenna is getting the stronger signal, the module will automatically switch back and forth between those two receivers. Some of the newer modules like the one I have, they actually have a different way of using those two receivers. Instead of jumping back and forth from one to the other, it actually takes kind of the best of both signals and then interlaces them together. So that's gonna overall give you probably the best image you can get. So just like the radio, it's gonna be a smart move to go ahead and just get the best goggles that you can afford because this is something you're using every single time you fly and it can be frustrating if you're not getting a good signal from your quad. If you can't see well, you can't fly FPV well. Okay, let's talk a little bit about chargers. There's two main different types of chargers that you can get. So you're gonna find AC or DC chargers. With the AC charger, you can take the charger and plug it directly into the wall, whereas a DC charger, the charger itself is not going to do anything. It doesn't have a power supply built into it. So you need to also buy an external power supply, whereas the AC charger has the power supply built into it. There's pros and cons to both. So typically your AC charger is going to be less expensive. Um, some of the power supplies you'll find out there can get kind of pricey. This one in particular is a pretty good deal. But the downside to AC is it usually has less power. So less power is going to be longer to charge your batteries or the less batteries you can charge at once. Another thing to look at in different chargers is how many outputs or channels does it have. So this charger has four channels. So it's essentially four chargers in one, whereas this one only has one. But the downside is each of those four is capable of putting out less power than what this one is. So depending on what batteries you're charging and how many you're trying to charge at the same time, it may take longer on this one. 
Another thing to think about when you're looking at chargers is how many amps is it capable of pushing out and what's the total wattage is it capable of. If you're not familiar with how voltage, amperage, and wattage works, they're all connected. So wattage is equal to volts times amps. The reason why that's important is if a charger says it's 10 amps, but it's only a 50 watt charger, it's gonna depend on the battery that you charge whether you can actually get to that 10 amps because they're all related. So the more of the cells in the battery, the higher the voltage. If the voltage is high, the amperage is gonna go down. So maybe it says it's a 10 amp charger, but you could really only charge a two cell battery at 10 amps. And if you were to put a three cell battery, maybe you're limited to seven. And if you were to put a six cell battery, maybe you're limited to two amps. So both of those are important and it's really important to look at the wattage because ultimately that will be the limiting factor on how many amps you can push out. So speaking of power, almost always a charger that requires a separate power supply is gonna be capable of pushing out more power. So what that means is you can charge more batteries at the same time and you can charge them faster. So just like the radio and the goggles, the charger is something that you're gonna use every single time you fly. So it's a really good idea to do your research, figure out which charger is gonna meet your needs and grow with you. You can buy a really cheap charger that'll get you in the air today, but chances are as you get more into the hobby and you have more batteries to charge, you're probably gonna end up replacing it. So that's gonna do it for today. Later on in the series, we'll have another episode that's all about using the chargers and how to charge your batteries properly. So thanks for watching and this has been Learn to FPV. Thank you.